The regular meeting of the Joliet City Council will now come to order Tuesday, March 17th, 2015, with the Mayor Tom Durrani presiding, and we have Pastor Lonnie Posley from New Canaan Land Christian Church going to say the Pledge of Allegiance, but before he does that, he's going to lead us in prayer. Please stand. Let us join hands with our neighbor. Father, we take this great opportunity to tell you thank you. We thank you for this auspicious occasion. Thank you for our wonderful mayor and also, God, the city council men and women that work with him. And God, we pray that everything that we say and do tonight be done in decent and order. And we give your name all praise and glory and honor. For it is in Jesus' name we pray and all God's people said together, amen. amen. I pledge allegiance to the, to the flag of the United States, States of America, America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Start with roll call, Mayor Gerani. Here. Councilwoman Gavin. Here. Councilman Girl. Here. Councilman Hug. Here. Councilman McFarland. Here. Councilman Morris. Here. Councilman Odekirk. Here. Councilwoman Quillman. Here. Councilman Turk. Councilman Turk, uh, this evening is his father's birthday, so he's yeah. taking his dad out to dinner. Okay, first under Mayor, Mayor Gerani appointments. I do not have any this evening. Next is a proclamation. The men of Valor II being accepted by Pastor Lonnie Posley and Pastor Clint Wilbur. Fifth District. This is an, indeed a great honor uh, to be able to uh, give this proclamation out. Uh, my passion for this city and the safety of its residents arene high. And so I know that we have a lot of organizations around <coughs> town that are paying particular attention to how do we make our streets safer. And so I want to also give them credit as well uh, in their efforts uh, to do just that. But uh, focusing on tonight's uh, proclamation, Whereas several years ago, Pastor Lonnie E. Posley, Sr. of New Canaan Land Christian Church, developed a male-oriented program to mentor boys, teenagers, and young men, young adult men. The program was revamped November 2014 when Pastor Posley and Pastor Clint Wilburn collaborated to address serious gun violence. Whereas the mentoring is done via worship, group interaction, sports, games, open and honest dialogue, counseling, psychotherapeutic interventions, role <coughs> modeling, and all aimed at addressing, grow, uh, addressing growing up and becoming strong, responsible male, males and contribute to a global economy. Whereas the hope an aim of Men of Valor II is to become a national model for youth everywhere. The goal is to bring men into the forefront and organize mentor boys, teens, youth who will stand up and unify to be seriously discussed, address, illuminated, and create a viable plan to rid the gun violence perpetrated on our children youth and young adults, whereas girls and young ladies are also at this table to help mentor female youth, whereas Pastor Posley and Pastor Wilburn believe that, yes, the time is now for men to stand up, stop talking about it, and become unified in an effort to lead a new sustainable gun violence reduction project in our community. Now, therefore, I, Thomas Durrani, Mayor of the City of Joliet, on behalf of the Joliet City Council, do hereby recognize Pastor Lonnie Posley Sr. and Pastor Clint Wilburn 
and the men of valor, too, for their <coughs> outstanding work that they are doing. Date March 17, 2015, signed by the Honorable Thomas Geronti Mayor. Gentlemen, thank you. Mayor, we have a uh, presentation that we would like to make uh, to you and to the city at this time, uh, what we call a declaration. And a number of citizens from a wide spectrum of the community came together a few weeks ago and they placed their signatures upon the document. And we have blown up a document that we want to present at this time. And Pastor Posley will make the presentation. Um, on behalf of the Men of Valor Two to this great council, to this, this great mayor. Uh, several of your constituents was with us on February the 28th at the Joliet Public Library, and they signed off on this. And our goal and objective is to get 10,000 signatures to tell this world and the city enough is enough. So we present this in honor to you, mayor, and we hope that you accept it and you can hang it in your office somewhere. And we thank you so very much. Thank you. Thank you. I will, uh, well, I'm not going to hang it in my office. I'm going to hang it out in front Thank where everybody can see it. Sure, sure. And then at the same sure. time, uh, Pastor Wilbur, because you are the president of Men of Valor 2, and we would like the board to come up, we also present to you uh, this uh, declaration as well. And we hope that it be a blessing and that it be momentum and that you remember that we are behind you 100%. We present it to you. Thank you. Keep up the good work, pastors. Thank you. Sure. <coughs> Next is a presentation, Urban Design Ventures 2015 through 2019 Consolidated Plan. Good evening, Mayor and members of Council. Uh, my name is Walter Hagland. I'm the president of a firm called Urban Design Ventures. We were hired by the city to assist the staff in preparing a five-year consolidated plan and its annual action plan for 2015. Uh, every five years, uh, all of the federal entitlements are required to submit what's known as a five-year consolidated plan. Uh, this summer, we held a series of meetings uh, uh, open discussions, uh, roundtable discussions, and interviews with uh, the mayor, with members of the staff, uh, with uh, various public service uh, entities, uh, and, and the directors of, of various departments. Uh, we have prepared the plan now, and the plan has been on display since March 6th. Uh, the public hearing, uh, the second public hearing on the plan was tonight, uh, beginning at 5.30, when we took additional citizens' comments. And it will come before City Council at your meeting on April 7, uh, 6th, and then submission to HUD will be April 13th. This year, the city will be receiving $889,834 in CDBG funds and $350,143 in home funds. Uh, we provided the uh, executive summary for council. Uh, there's six points uh, in there as far as priorities. It's housing, homeless, other special needs, community development, economic development, and administration and planning. Uh, I'm here tonight if to uh, uh, answer any questions and to present this to council so uh, you would have some uh, um, familiarity uh, with the uh, program when it's presented to you on the 6th of April. And uh, I'm available for any questions that council may have. Council? We just received these documents, Mayor, this afternoon. <coughs> so maybe when you come back, we'll have questions, but I haven't had time to review. Okay, sure. Anyone else? Thank you. We'll see you on the 6th. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. 
Next, we have the approval of the agenda. Is there a motion to approve the agenda as written with the following change? Pull council memo number 134-15, <coughs> award a contract for the well 24D rehabilitation project from the agenda. So moved. Second. Second. It has been motioned and seconded to approve. Councilwoman Gavin. Aye. Councilman Girl. Aye. Councilman Hug. Aye. Councilman McFarland. Aye. Councilman Morris. Aye. Councilman Odekirk. Aye. Councilwoman Quillman. Aye. Mayor Gerani. Aye. Motion carried. Next is the appointment of Mayor Pro Tem. Is there a motion to appoint Councilman Turk to serve as Mayor Pro Tem for the term April 1st, 2015 through June 30th, 2015? So move. Second. Second. It's been motioned and seconded to approve. Councilman Girl. Aye. Councilman Hugs. Aye. Councilman McFarland. Aye. Councilman Morris. Aye. Councilman Odekirk. Aye. Councilwoman Quillman. Aye. Mayor Gerani. Aye. Motion carried. Council committee reports, CTIS committee. CTIS committee meeting met, let me see, I have my notes here. Sorry about that. We met last week, March, was March 2nd actually, we met in the, um, here they are. We met in the council chambers over here and the committee consists of Councilman Hogg and Councilman Betty Gavin and we discussed our website that it's not very user friendly and the reason for that is there's some confusing uh, links on there. <coughs> so what we decided to do was update it and especially for community services we decided to put in four categories. So the links would be under community services, it would be social services, neighborhoods, um, is such as neighborhood groups, homeowners associations, and um, uh, Councilman, can you help me? Yeah. What was the fourth one? Do you social remember? Service group. Did you social know? services and Out of that. homeowners associations. I don't recall. Scott, Scott here, yes. can you help us out? <laughs> Uh, that it was neighborhood organizations. Neighbor, well, I said that. Neighborhood organizations, homeowners associations, uh, social services, <laughs> and that fourth I'm, I'm one. I'm sorry. From the top, it's social services, quality of life. Quality of life. That was it. That's the okay. most, one of the most important ones. Sorry about that. Anyway, uh, we discussed that, and the links will be up there. And this came to us um, because one of the groups named Khan had a website and they wanted to, us to reach out to the lesbian and gay and transgender community because they felt that they were being ignored. So we looked up their website, it's a legitimate organization, so that will be up and running very soon, but we decided that any other organization that has a 5013C, uh, we'll check them out so that they have to form an application and a pol we'll have a policy in place so that those organizations, if they want to get up on our website, when you go to Joliet, look at community events or links, they can click on to anything. The neighborhoods will come up or homeowners associations or social services or quality of life issues will come out. You can just click on that and click on that and get all the information that you need. It's still a work in progress. And uh, would you folks like to add anything to it, Betty or Councilman Hug? No, not at all. That's it. So if anybody has any input, uh, they can call me, they can call City Hall. And uh, like I said, we're still under review, but we want to make our website user friendly. So if you're looking for something particular, you can just, it'll just pop up one click and not 10 clicks and where is this thing? Okay, thank you. That concludes our report. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> finance committee. We held a finance committee in the uh, council boardroom this afternoon. <laughs> Um, oh, about 10 to 6 we started. It will be a brief report. In attendance was Councilman Girl, myself. Councilman Turk was unable to attend. He had a pressing uh, commitment that he could not get around. Didn't matter. It was very much housekeeping. Also in attendance was Mayor Gerani and Councilman Morris, as well as our Finance Director, Jim Gadotti, and our Director of Human Resources, Ken Mahalik. Uh, we, we, we reviewed personnel summary, travel, expense report and the uh, invoices paid. In other words, we paid our bill bills. Everything was determined to be in order. The only other item that was brought up by our director of finance, Jim Gadotti, is we are moving forward now. Um, 
sending the formal letter to reissue the last of five bonds. The, the uh, four that we issued and this one here should be, it doesn't uh, extend the bond life at all. It'll be for the same remaining eight years. We saved quite a bit of money when we reissued four bonds in the fall. We're reissuing this last bond, which was issued in May of 2005, and is approximately $6.8 <clears throat> million. So what we'll essentially will do, once our bond company, Bernardi, um, you know, issues the bonds and gets investors, we'll, we'll save money. And that's pretty much the report, unless I've missed anything, John. Okay. Thank you. Public Safety Committee. Uh, yes, Your Honor. The Public Safety Committee met uh, this evening as well. Uh, we had two items of business that we discussed. The first item uh, is on your agenda. It's uh, Council Member 131-15. Um, we heard a report from Stenard and Associates uh, to perform uh, testing associated with the uh, entry-level firefighters exam. Um, as most of you know, uh, that list, the firefighters list, uh, expires on May 15th of 2015. Uh, so this is merely just to get us a, a good list to, to work off of. And uh, as I said, uh, Council Member 131-15 um, is basically approving Stenard and Associates uh, to administer that test. Uh, the next item of business that we discussed was uh, Council Member 146-15. Um, basically what we have here is that as you recall, uh, I think it was either last, I think it was last month, we approved um, a, the purchase of 11 uh, police interceptors, 11 police vehicles um, with uh, um, uh, Rod Baker Ford in Shorewood. Um, Rod Baker was not the lowest bidder. However, there was a very small difference as far as between the lowest bidder and Rod Baker Ford, and we felt that it would be best to go with uh, Rod Baker Ford since they were local, uh, they employ local people, and, um, um, and that sort of thing. However, when Rod Baker was informed that they were selected to, uh, they were selected to provide these vehicles, and when they went to purchase the vehicles from Ford, unfortunately, uh, they were unable to do so because Ford stopped manufacturing or selling the 2015 model. So in that case, what we had to do, we're going to have to do is, is cancel that uh, uh, contract and approve a new contract, approving Morrill Brothers Ford, uh, who was the, actually the lowest bidder uh, to purchase these 11 vehicles. Um, reason being is that if we were to wait for Ford, they would have to purchase the 2016 vehicles. They would be more expensive and there would be a delay uh, in, in, in uh, there would be delay in, in us purchasing those vehicles. Um, the uh, chief gave a, an excellent presentation. Uh, he was very um, adamant that he needed those vehicles um, <coughs> immediately and as soon as possible. So what we're going to do today or this evening is we're going to cancel the original contract with Rod Baker <coughs> and then approve a new contract with Morrill Brothers uh, to purchase those uh, 11 uh, police interceptor vehicles. So. Uh, unless there's any questions, that concludes my report. And again, that's Council Memo 146-15. Thank you. <clears throat> Public Service Committee. Public Service met yesterday afternoon. <coughs> Councilwoman uh, Gavin, myself, and Councilman Turk attended. <coughs> everything was routine. Everything uh, was approved except for one item on a well, which we are tabling to our next meeting. The only thing that I want to mention for uh, <coughs> note is that the concrete retaining wall that's on the south side of Jefferson Street towards the old Julia Catholic uh, High School, which is now the Victory Center, is deteriorating. And we are approving a contract this evening to uh, basically make improvements to the existing retaining wall. So there will be some <coughs> lane closures while that construction takes place, which we will send out press releases and notify the public that there will be lane closures on Jefferson Street during the repair of this uh, wall. That's all I have to uh, report on our uh, committee meeting. Unless Councilwoman Gavin has anything to add. Everything, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I show no other reports. Next is the consent agenda. Approval of minutes. It is recommended the minutes of the pre-council <coughs> meeting held on March 2nd, 2015, and the minutes of the regular council meeting held on March 3rd, 2015 stand approved as recorded. Invoices paid report, treasures disbursements, and regular claims. It is recommended this report be received and placed on file. Council memo number 117-15, position vacancies. It is recommended the city manager be authorized to fill one fire captain position with subsequent vacancies and one project manager position. Council memo number 118-15, regular payroll, February 6th through February 19, 2015. 
$3,167,877.35. It is recommended said regular payroll be approved. Is there a motion to approve said consent agenda items? So moved. Second. Second. Questions? Pauline? It has been motioned and seconded to approve. Councilman Hugs? Aye. Councilman McFarland? Aye. Councilman Morris? Aye. Councilman Odekirk? Aye. Councilwoman Coleman? <coughs> Aye, with the exception of those pertaining to my employer. Councilwoman Gavin? Aye. Councilman Girl? Aye. Mayor Droney? Aye. Motion carried. Next, licenses and permit applications. Council memo number 120-15, issuance of a Class E liquor license at 81 North Chicago Street, Venezuelan Bowl. It is recommended Recommended Venezuelan Bowl LLC has issued a Class E liquor license. So moved. Second. It has been motioned and seconded to approve. Councilman McFarland? Aye. Councilman Morris? Aye. Councilman Odekirk? Aye. Councilwoman Cloman? Aye. Councilwoman Gavin? Aye. Councilman Girl? Aye. Councilman Hug? Aye. I'm sorry. Mayor Drani? Aye. Motion carried. Sense, Council memo number 121-15, <coughs> transfer of a Class C liquor license at 7142 Caton Farm Road, Pantry Lane. It is recommended to uh, Venetia Pantry, Inc., doing business as Pantry Lane, be issued a Class C <coughs> liquor license. So moved. Second. It's been motioned and seconded to approve. Councilman Morris? Aye. Councilman Odekirk? Aye. Councilwoman Quillman? Aye. Councilwoman Gavin? Aye. Councilman Girl? Aye. Councilman Hugs? Aye. Councilman McFarland? Aye. Mayor Trani? Aye. Motion carried. Ordinances and resolutions. Ordinances. Council memo number 123-15. Ordinance approving the reclassification of 711 Whitney Avenue from R3 uh, 1 and 2 family residential zoning to R2 single family residential zoning. It is recommended said ordinance be adopted. So moved. Second. Questions? <coughs> Councilman Pauline. Odekirk? Aye. Councilwoman Quillman? Aye. Councilwoman Gavin? Aye. Councilman Girl? Aye. Councilman Hugg? Aye. Councilman McFarland? Aye. Councilman Morris? Aye. Mayor Drani? Aye. Motion carried. <coughs> Council memo number 124-15. Ordinance approving a variance of use to allow a resale boutique in an existing commercial strip center, a B3 general business use in a B1 neighborhood business district, and an ordinance approving a special use permit to allow a resale boutique in an existing commercial strip center located at 2785 Black Road. It is recommended said ordinance be adopted. So moved. Second. Mayor. Questions, yeah. I had asked for the owners to be present tonight. Are the owners here? You want to step up to the microphone, please? Mayor, yes. last, last night the request was made, and you've got an addendum before you this evening, of, of the other uh, resale shops that are in the area that have been approved. And please note that three of those eight have, are already closed. Yeah. Well, there was some question last night about what types of uh, <laughs> items you'd be selling in your resale shop. And so I thought, well, the best way to resolve that is have you come and explain your shops for us. Okay. Um, children clothes, children toys, uh, adult clothes, adult uh, shoes, uh, a few furniture uh, items, <coughs> which would be on my website because it's only a 600 square feet store, so I wouldn't be able to house them there. So I would have a website <coughs> and a storage space where I would show <coughs> the uh, items if um, someone wants to see them. Um, some lotions, uh, hand lotions, things of that nature. Okay, Eric, there's my question. How do you resell lotions? <laughs> Well, I have, um, I, I buy it and, and I buy it at a small price and then I can resell it. But they haven't been used before? No. Okay, when I hear resale, it's something that's been gently used and brought back. No, okay. some of the items are new. Okay. Like the so you're, type, you're really a cross between Plato's Closet and Clothes Mentor that's over there on um, Plainfield Road? I'm not familiar with that, but... I, I do have new and used items uh, for sale, and I will be doing some consignment, small consignments. Okay. Does that satisfy you, Councilman McFarland? 
Lee. I didn't bring it up. Oh, yeah, you did last night. Oh, I didn't. <laughs> anyway. I think Councilman Hug brought it up. I brought up about the Okay, cars I apologize. Being you two sit back there. You talk all the time, so I, <laughs> I get you mixed up. Any Councilman Hug, is that satisfying? Yes, comment. Sure. I, and I'm satisfied. Um, and I want to thank you, Jim. Um, I did not realize that three had closed. My main concern was that we had talked about <coughs> about a year and a half ago about keeping a cap on them. So just to clarify, we had seven until we, should we approve this. We have seven currently with three that have, have closed, so we really only have four right now. Am, is my math right? Well, we Unless have, we approve we this one. Recently which approved uh, St. Vincent de Paul. We have five right uh, now. Number eight. This will be six. Oh, I'm sorry, recently. Okay, this will be six. Okay, so thank you for giving me the information I wanted. Councilman, Mayor. <coughs> Let's clarify, though. This is talking about west of Rainer A, if the memo says. Right. That's not citywide. This is west of Rainer. Right. right, along the Jefferson Corridor. Yeah. Right. right. Thank you. What's your pleasure? Is there a motion? Yep, it's been motioned and motion. seconded to okay. approve. Pauline. Uh, Councilwoman Quillman. Aye. Councilwoman Gavin. Aye. Councilman Girl. Aye. Councilman Hugs. Aye. Councilman McFarland. Aye. Councilman Morris. Aye. Councilman Odekirk. Aye. Mayor Drani. <coughs> Aye. Motion carried. Council memo number 125-15, an ordinance approving a special use permit to allow auto repair in an existing commercial building located at 1213 North Broadway Street. It is recommended said ordinance be adopted. Any more questions? I know we had a few last night. Everybody satisfied? Okay, the car. Yes. So moved. Second. Pauline. It's been motioned and seconded to approve. Where am I at here? Uh, he was last. Sorry, we got rid of Councilman Turk. <laughs> uh, Councilwoman Gavin? Aye. Councilman <coughs> Girl? Aye. Councilman Hugs? Aye. Councilman McFarland? Aye. Councilman Morris? Aye. Councilman Odekirk? Aye. Councilwoman Quimmin? I'm also going to vote I did talk with one of the neighborhood um, folks over there that are very active with the Cunningham neighborhood, and they said they wouldn't mind having that there. And <coughs> I believe Mr. Sheridan said the same thing last night, so I'll also vote aye. Thank you. Mayor Gerani. Aye. Motion carried. Resolutions. Council memo number 127-15, resolution approving an intergovernmental agreement with the State of Illinois Department of Transportation for the upgrades to traffic signals on state highways <coughs> with lighting light emanating LED module and uninterruptible power supply UPS and countdown pedestrian signals phase two. It is recommended said resolution be adopted. So moved. Second. Pauline. Uh, Councilman Girl. Aye. Councilman <coughs> Hugs. Aye. Councilman McFarland. Aye. Councilman Morris. Aye. Councilman Odekirk. Aye. Councilwoman Quillman. Aye. Councilman, our Councilwoman Gavin. Aye. And Mayor Drenning. Aye. Motion carried. Council memo number 128-15, uh, resolution appropriating funds associated with an intergovernmental agreement with the state of Illinois. I'm sorry. Yep, with the state of Illinois. Uh, Department of Transportation for the upgrades to traffic signals on state highways with light emanating. IADOT LED modules and uninterruptible power supply UPS and countdown pedestrian phase two. So moved. Second. All in. It's been motion and <coughs> seconded to approve. Councilman Hugg. Aye. Councilman McFarland. Aye. Councilman Odekirk. Aye. Councilwoman Quillman. Aye. Of course. Uh, yeah. Did I skip you? Aye. No. <laughs> more sorry. <laughs> Councilman Odekirk, Councilwoman Quillman, Councilwoman Gavin. Aye. Councilman Girl. Aye. And Mayor Drani. Aye. And motion carried. Uh, award of contracts. Council memo number 130-15, purchase of tasers. Uh, Council memo number 131-15, approval, approve a professional service agreement for entry-level firefighters, paramedics. Council memo number 132-15, award a contract for the Lafayette Street, Joliet Street parking lot project 2015. Council memo number 133-15, award a contract for the 
well 2070 <coughs> rehabilitation project council memo number 135-15 award a contract for the well rock 2 rehabilitation project council memo number 136-15 award a contract for the well rock 3 rehabilitation project council memo number 137-15 award a contract for the west side wastewater treatment plant detention basin crack ceiling project Council memo number 138-15, award the 2015 through 2016 landscape maintenance contract. Council memo number 139-15, award the 2015 utility restoration program phase one contract. Council memo number 140-15, purchase of <coughs> sewer pipe television inspection crawler and camera system. Council memo number 141-15, award a contract for the 2015 traffic signal materials purchase order. Council memo number 142-15, award a con contract for the 2015 lawn mowing service project utilities. Council memo number 143-15, award a contract for the Victory Center wall repair project 2015. Council memo number 144-15, award a contract for the Elgin Avenue Cracker Avenue, Scribner Street, Water Main Improvements Project, 2015. Council memo number 145-15, purchase vehicle for public utilities. Council memo number 146-15, purchase public safety vehicles. And I will not read these again, Councilman. <laughs> <laughs> what I was going to say. <laughs> it is recommended council memos number 130-15 through 133-15 and 135-15 through 146-15 be approved. <laughs> <laughs> Second. <laughs> just, just to make sure that the council, as I mentioned in my uh, public safety report, um, in uh, Council Member 146-15, not only are we authorizing the purchase of the 11 um, uh, police interceptor vehicles, but we're also canceling uh, the order uh, with uh, Rod Baker Plainfield, as I explained to my committee. So I just wanted to clear. Uh, yes, and I'll second that motion. It's been motioned and seconded to approve. Councilman McFarland. Aye. Councilman Morris. Aye. Councilman Odekirk. Aye. Councilwoman Quillman. Aye. Councilwoman Gavin. Aye. Councilman Girl. Aye. Councilman Hug. Only my wife reads my mind. I don't know how you figured that out. <laughs> Aye. <laughs> Mayor Durrani. Aye. Motion carried. Amendments, change orders, and payments. Council memo number 148-15, approved change order number one for the Haldeman Terrace Phase Two Water Main Re location project. It is recommended council memo number 148-15 be approved. So moved. Second. Volume. It's been motioned and seconded to approve. Councilman Morris. Aye. Councilman Odekirk. Aye. Councilwoman Quillman. Aye. Councilwoman Gavin. Aye. Councilman Girl. Aye. Councilman Hugs. Aye. Councilman McFarland. Aye. Mayor Gerani. Aye. Boring, ain't it, folks? <laughs> <laughs> I was doing my best to make it. <laughs> Motion carry. City manager. Uh, a couple of things. First of all, I want to let you know that I've been in communication with the director at the Will County Senior Services uh, Facility, uh, gathering some more information. Uh, should have uh, something definitive to report to you by the end of the week. Uh, the other thing is, is I'm going to go to the podium and do a little presentation and review with you the uh, multimodal budget. Okay, how do I start the program? <laughs> Folks, uh, we will understand if some of you have to leave, okay? <laughs> Believe me. <laughs> sure, sure. You won't. You're not, you're not going to offend us. <laughs> as, as you know, the uh, city is... Jim, uh, why don't you wait? By the way, happy birthday, Jim. Huh? Thank you. Sure. Happy birthday. And I came to the meeting. Yeah, right. Well, it's his dad's birthday. <laughs> well, happy no birthday, No one's going to take sir. you out to dinner. <laughs> right. How about your own dinner? Would you like to be excused? <laughs> it's my wife's birthday. 
Well, happy birthday to Mrs. Shanahan. All right. <laughs> it's Mike's birthday. You can always find a birthday party. <laughs> yeah. Marty's yeah. birthday as well. Come. And I'm telling you. Yeah. 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 Wait, this is a really exciting presentation. Come on. <laughs> I can see that. All right. <laughs> I'm leaving too, Mayor. <laughs> sure, we like to edit it after everybody left. <laughs> well, there's, uh, as you know, in the uh, multimodal uh, facility here. We are uh, abandoning Union Station uh, platform and building two new platforms, a new train station with turnaround and a new uh, bus station. Um, and I'll have you refer to the details of the budget mm -hmm. that I've uh, provided to you here. Uh, the first three items at the top that the city is responsible for is the engineering uh, the acquisition of property and the demolition of property. What we have are, uh, and, and what we've finished is in red. So really the only thing that's uh, been completed is the rebuilding of the uh, lot on Chicago and Marion Street. <coughs> and uh, we've also uh, completed the security office build out inside Union Station. And what will eventually do is, is have fiber optic connecting the police department with Union Station, with the new uh, bus station, with the new train station, with the new platforms. We'll have cameras throughout this area that will feed directly into the police department for continual <coughs> monitoring. <coughs> but uh, I'll point out to you that uh, one of the things that's been changed, I, I think I've told you, is that we are going to keep the old switching station and integrate that into a wall of the, the new train station. Now, from the ground level, uh, you will not be able to see that, even though it's a higher elevation. Obviously, the only place you'll really <coughs> be able to see it is, is from the platform of the old Union Station. The other thing is that uh, I want to show you part of the redesign in order to uh, keep costs down is that uh, you'll, you'll see uh, the old design of the bus station as a long plaza with the building tucked up against the wall with uh, you know a long tunnel here. And part of the changes in the project is that we're going to take down one of the, uh, the railroad track bridges, and that will narrow that corridor and create a, a larger open space feeling. Uh, the other thing is that uh, we are moving the uh, bus station away from the back wall and bringing it forward to the turnaround for the, for the buses here. This will create a visual space for uh, police officers to see all the way through here. They'll be able to see all the way through the tunnel here, and it'll create a much more open plaza feel inside, uh, just outside the uh, bus area. Jim, what are we looking at here? <clears throat> what streets are this these? Is, this is looking vertically down on where the new bus station will be. So going back to this, this slide, where you see the, the <coughs> bus station right now, it's going to be moved out here. This whole wall will be taken out, won't exist. This tower will be integrated into the design of the new building. <coughs> and I'll uh, show you, th there's a floor plan, but there's looking at a side view, and you can see that that, uh, that light tower will be integrated into the uh, entryway space of, of the uh, new bus station. Mayor. Sure. So. Jim, just kind of go in, in order. So, you're, so this sheet here, do you have this that you can pull up on the screen? No, because nobody will be able to see it. 
right. So you're saying the city's in charge of the engineering and land acquisition? Yes, and the demolitions. And then the numbers you have on here, you have encumbered estimate four million, spent at eight three point five six six million. I was just, how did we come up with those numbers? Because this council, I just went back and pulled a little bit um, of council memos. Council memos uh, from 2012 with engineering. Yes. And I'm getting that we spent in change orders a million six nine eight five, and we just approved two different ones, th just this uh, past year. So I'm curious. So when you're giving us these estimates, is this including change order numbers? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So they're really not true cost. Or I, you know, I'm saying when I'm saying estimated, I mean, is there more change orders coming for design work, or is that unforeseen? We hope not. Right. <laughs> Obviously, there was redesign expense with with the final design of like the bus station. And we had to do some redesign work uh, on the train station, but actually we're going to save money on the construction by utilizing that, w that back wall of the switching station into the new station. So we'll, sa we'll save far and above what the additional engineering costs were in the redesign for the new uh, train station. <clears throat> so if you wanna, uh, looking at the budget, uh, on the far right, you'll see uh, Weller Grant, uh, PACE funds, and BNSF funds, and, and these are uh, various contributors. Down at the bottom left, you'll see the uh, globe, what's called the global revenue sources. So you've got the total state grant funding, BNSF contribution, city contribution, the Weller Grant and uh, PACE and RTA funds. So uh, along with, we, we will soon be doing uh, tunnel changes. There'll be the uh, Chicago Street Viaduct, Jefferson Street Viaduct, <coughs> uh, demolition of that uh, train track tunnel under Michigan, uh, con construction of both concurrent construction of the train station and the bus station. Uh, along with that, I've got up there now the slide of uh, Ace Metals property. You'll see that uh, up under acquisitions at the top. That's $820,000 uh, for the acquisition. Uh, the construction will include uh, creation of a parking lot at the north end, and this will all be detention for the adjacent parking lot and also the uh, bus uh, station turnaround for all of the buses and the docking facilities. Jim, yes. you mentioned the Chicago Street Viaduct. Yes. Uh, have we got the okay from the railroad to <coughs> fix that up like we wanted to, or they just give us the okay? Like, yeah, we got no, that's, that's been approved. That and has been approved. There's the architectural rendering yeah, okay, very good. of what that'll look like Thank you. as Thank you're you. coming north on Chicago Street. Thank you. Jim. <coughs> yes. If you don't mind that. Sure. Well, some questions. The city portion. Um, the city contribution, the 9.8 million. Yes. That was the 1.65 million that we got. Am I correct? You weren't here at the time. All, no, all of the means. revenues for this project are coming from Center Point. Center Point. That's they right. They gave us what 1.65 million over five years, right? Each year. Right. Remember? I think we had about eight million. There's yeah. 1.2 million dollars a year that they were giving us, and and. And, and they still owe us. How much is currently in that fund? Jim? I don't have the answer to that one. Okay. But <coughs> the, other, the other thing is, is that... Uh, Jim, oh, just sure. to piggyback on that, wasn't the original amount from them, though, 7.5? Yes. That rings a bell. So how... And that so, number... So what about that? So that number really just represented pay. the... Uh, we were responsible for 15% of the, uh, the grant from the state. That was our obligation. So, uh, and then we had additional funds from Center Point. Plus, we're continuing to get uh, funds from from Center Point. So, I guess my question is: on this document, we see 9.842 yes. city contribution, and Councilman Hug asked if that was all Center Point money. Yes. So, yeah. the, so back again. I'm just going back to the original documentation when this came out. It said 7.511 million from right. Center Point. So did Center Point agree that the council did not know about to pay the additional two point? There are million? some additional revenues from Center Point, uh, including 
You'll recall recently they gave us $500,000 to take back the property that we were going to use for a police and fire uh, training facility, and we didn't have the funds for it. Uh, they had somebody that wanted to occupy the property, so we let them take it back, and they gave us an additional half a million dollar contribution. So there are continuing revenues here. But I believe this, this is the set number right here. This is the budget. And, and the, the goal of this, as, as you'll see, the last item uh, in beige there says union station stabilization. So uh, at, at the end of the project, we hope to have 1.625 million for that renovation. <clears throat> the, the more there are cost overruns in other areas, the less there will be left for that. Uh, and so we're, we're discussing with the, the state right now in terms of how to deal with potential cost overruns as we go to bids and who's responsible for that cost overrun because I don't want them dipping into this, what we thought would actually be more than 1.6 million, but because of, and, and we went back and we did a lot of redesign work, which I've just shown you and told you about, to decrease the overall budget, to get it more in line with uh, the numbers uh, that we've been provided through the grant funding and through uh, resources from Centerpoint so that we can have money left to do a, a good renovation of Union Station. Jim, if, if there are overruns and it's <coughs> PACE's fault or BNSF's fault, do they cover them or is that, is that coming out of the budget? BNSF funds are fixed. Uh, PACE is a, is a contribution. Uh, really, the, the hope is that the, the additional would come from the state. Okay. They only budgeted 1% contingency right. on right. this project out of a $46 million project, uh, which is a ridiculously low <laughs> number when you're doing any kind of construction project. Right. It's typically 10% is what you're going to budget for cost overruns. Right. Uh, so one with 1% with again, uh, we, we want to clarify that the uh, funding would come from the state and uh, not dip into what we want to have left for Union Station renovations. Jim. So, Jim, just to clarify, so you on this chart, I'm just trying to get up and, sure. and just to clarify, <clears throat> there's no like smoke here or fire. This is just to clarify for myself and council members as I, I've talked to some of you guys and Nobody really knows what we spent so far, where funding's coming. I've been asked publicly on this. Mm -hmm. So I just want to thank you for finally putting something together on paper. And we'll put this on our website. To uh, try to uh, really see where the funding's coming from and what we need to find in terms of completing the project in terms of financial contributions. Right. And again, I just did some of my own homework. But again, going back to the memo from 7-11 of 2012, the state we put in there that they're going to give us 32 million or that's what we received and then on your sheet it's saying 30 million so did the state cut I, back on 2 million well i think that we broke out the uh, the weller grant funding i i think that was the 30 where the 32 million dollar figure came from you'll see at the bottom 2.3 million under the okay. you know Is that it was federal called money then? grant funding Yes. Both state and federal. Okay. So then to cover the city's contribution, what you're saying to us is that Center Points continue <coughs> is gonna to continue to give us that money until whatever the cost is on the project or no. So what are we saying? This number is fixed. I'd I i, I would not count on anything more from Center Point. And and so that's my point. Is we've based on these estimates, we've got one point six million dollars left. When the project is all over and done, we'll start doing renovations of, of Union Station and, and hopefully have $1.6 million there. And as, and, and you can see, everything's happening at once this, you know, this season. We'll be going out to bid on the bus station and the train station and the platform all at once. And, uh, and so the, as these numbers firm up, uh, I think the city has compromised enough on the redesign of this whole, uh, right. you know, complicated project here, and we don't want the state to say, 
oh, now you've got to redesign it yeah. in order to cut the cost even further. So that's what we're in discussions with the state. Could you just answer one other question I had on here going through the memos was we had a uh, window replacement grant for 233000 from the U.S. DOE for window replacement at the existing train station? Yes. Do you know what happened with that or did we do that? We did, we did that. Okay. That was... I didn't see it on here. That's why I'm asking. I think it was two years ago. Yeah. Is that something totally different than yeah, it's Yeah, it's not? totally different. Okay. Yes. Okay. Any other questions? Um, mm -hmm. Real quick. So you're going to put the same thing that we're looking at up there for the public to see. That's right. Because I think this answers all the questions most people would have. Good. And the other thing, um, Union Station is a historic landmark. I, I, have we investigated federal grants based on their, their standing? I say I don't want to say state grants because, you know, I don't know if they have any money down Springfield anymore. That's aren't much better. <laughs> right. So, are, you know, are we investigating that based on a, yes, is it a yes, national historic landmark or just a state? No, I think it is a historic, national historic landmark. So we are look. Somebody said that. Somebody said something. Oh, there we go. Bar national. Okay. So we are looking into that to see if we can shake some money. Maybe just one more. Sure. Sorry. So just to recap here, Jim. Sorry. Um, and then I, I, I might have more questions, of course, next meeting. Sure. But so what we're looking at, just to go over this, originally the state was going to give us 32 million. We're now anticipating 30 million. The BNSF contribution of 2.2 million. <laughs> is that that's a contribution to us, or is that just to move their tracks? No, that's to the project. Okay. You you can see over at the far right, uh, the goal is uh, 325,000 will be for the Chicago Street Viaduct. 250,000 for Jefferson Street Viaduct uh, for for those types of improvements that you see on the slide right now, and then the 1.6 million left for Union Station. Okay, and then the federal Weller grant for the commuter park that's already been expended. That's 2.3 million. Yes. Right? And then the additional RTA PACE grant that's 1.79 million. So 40, you're saying that we'll, hopefully we come in at 46,121. <clears throat> yes. And if it doesn't come in at that dollar amount, do we have a plan B? Because it seems, you know, on the radio today you spoke that there wasn't a contingency of 10% factored into the, uh, the overall project cost. Right. And we're already over, I think, almost 10% on just where we're at today. And I think I read somewhere we're 18 months behind on this project. And we still have the Heritage Corridor platform. We have the actual... Uh, 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 help me out the new train station we have the actual bus parking lot and the pace station so I guess my question is the way we're currently moving is there's overruns and thank God for center point that they've been able to cover that additional two million according to your sheet here yes what if we do run into overruns in a deficit I mean are we looking at plans are we going to factor in the 2016 budget in a, in a separate contingency fund? That's, that's what we're in negotiations with the state with right now. That's the memorandum of understanding that we're trying to come to an agreement on and that I'll present to you when it's ready. Can we publicly say how much the state is trying to <laughs> potentially bail out on this project, or is that something we don't want to discuss publicly? No, I don't think we want to discuss that publicly right now. It kind of seems like, uh, to my fellow councilmen, it kind of <coughs> seems like a theme with the state, right? Senior services, our local daycares, and now the city itself. And we're talking about our income tax portions <coughs> to the city being cut potentially $7 million. Yeah. So um, I, I just think it's of some concern and that, as we know, this could happen that we plan accordingly, especially in, for 2016, that if we're at 10 percent now and we've got these four major components that need to be completed, that we find some type of revenue stream, especially on the helm of, of the uh, decision today with Evergreen with a, a you know, $15 million uh, purchase price. So that's all I have, Mayor. Thank you. And then just a reminder, uh, we'd like to go into closed session. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> Business not for final action or recommendation. Yes. I may. <clears throat> Mr. Hawk, um, and I guess I'll address this to you uh, in legal. Uh, the gas station over on center. Um, <clears throat> where are we with that, sir? Uh, I spoke to uh, staff today, and we will 
uh, get a couple of estimates on uh, demolition at the property, and uh, we'll present those numbers uh, to you for your consideration. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anybody else? Yeah. Yes. Uh, uh, Jim, just some brainstorming over the weekend. I don't know if someone saw this or not. Um, regarding the Rialto and the ongoing work that's being done there, not just with the marquee, but the other repairs they're doing, and seeing that they're in a financial crunch, has anyone from the city um, approached the building trades and asked them if they would be willing to uh, donate time or labor to the I, Rialto project? I think the mayor has some information uh, on Yes. That. Uh, we had a walkthrough last week. I got a hold of Doc Gregory from the <coughs> trades. Uh, we had a walkthrough. Um, in fact, Hugo from the Painters Union, I seen him yesterday before a meeting I was going to, and he was with a drywall person, and they're going to do some painting and drywall. Uh, the uh, bricklayers are going to do some tuck pointing, but they have their uh, apprentices do it, and they're only going to do tuck pointing on what they can reach. They're not going to go up. The, the chimney is bad. Uh, they're not going up high because, like I say, these are these are apprentices. Um, so we we have met with them. Uh, we got to receive the list from uh, Randy Green on what needs to be done. And like I say, we had a walk through with the painters, uh, drywallers, uh, bricklayers, uh, plumbers, and they're going to let um, Randy Green uh, know what they can do. I think it's good. Anything they can do to help out, um, they need help over there. That's a good idea. Thank you. Anybody else? Man, I do. Larry thought I was all done last night. I thought you were. A <laughs> uh, couple, uh, couple items here. Um, first off, all of the council members received a uh, draft email today of an ordinance establishing rules for public speaking. I'm requesting uh, Councilman Morris if you could potentially uh, uh, put this on the agenda for our next land use meeting, which is at the end of the month. I believe we have uh, a s two land use meetings this month. Tomorrow. If tomorrow, don't we have one more the following week? Yes. So do you mind putting this on there? Well, that's what we want to talk about tomorrow, right? No, that's the right? tomorrow we're doing the uh, we could put on tomorrow, but tomorrow's the job descriptions. And that's okay. That's, you want to you want to combine it? That'd be great. That's the rules of order for. Yes, you're well. Yeah. I just like to Second get some meeting. formal right, and then also, uh, um, councilman or councilman, uh, Mr. Hack, if we could possibly also put this on our website, the draft. Uh, uh, yes. We can do that. Ordinance. I think it's important to get public input on the rules for uh, public speaking. Thank you. Second thing is um, it's, it's been probably a month or two since we had the snowfall, and there's been a lot of dialogue on, on the snowfall and the, the city's response to the, to the snow and the city's actions and, um, and removing the snow. And one of the things that I heard that was very uh, disheartening to, to <clears throat> myself is whether or not we had staff um, that were informed by their supervisor not to put their plows down because of political reasons. And I remember when I first got elected, there were some concerns again with the timeliness of snow removal and whether or not a plow went down the street and, and, and when and whether or not a subdivision was hit or not, or a street was hit or not. And I was informed that we have mechanisms on our vehicles that kind of track that type of uh, activity. And I asked um, if we could get a report on that, and I'm just asking the Director of Public Works if he could just kind of highlight um, over those two days exactly the miles in it that the plows were actually down plowing the, uh, the, the streets. And when is it a plow is up when they're out there to plow the streets in a storm. So Mr. Uh, Triz and I have asked him, uh, I, I notified him earlier today that I'd be asking this question. And I'd just like to clear the air for, for our residents and for those naysayers that are spreading those false rumors. Yeah, exactly. Um, when we're out snow plowing, unless it's, it's an event where it's an ice event only or you've got a half an inch of snow, something very minimal, and that's a situation where we would not put the plows down. Whenever we have a snow, you know, large enough accumulation to plow, we put the plows down. Um, those other those instances I mentioned, if it's a salt, if, if it's a, uh, a ice storm, freezing rain, you know, maybe just just a dusting of snow, we we may not put plows down, but we would we would put salt down typically in those events. Um, 
the major storm we had on, on uh, February 1st and 2nd, uh, obviously our, our, we were out plowing the streets. The, our crews were never told not put, to not put plows down. That's never, I've been here 28 years. We have never given a directive like that. I'm not sure where that would come from, but um, they're always directed to put their plows down, plow the streets. Uh, it was a long duration event. Um, as I explained before, um, and I confirmed this with a lot of my colleagues around Northern Illinois when I was working on the report with the city manager on, on our manpower, other communities had the same issue. This was not a normal storm. This was a very abnormal storm compared to the storms we typically have in the middle of winter. <coughs> abnormal because it was very warm when the snow started. It was raining Saturday evening. I was out and about. It was raining, misting. Then we got very, very wet snow for about eight inches. Um, and it stayed warm, 32, 33 degrees. It was very, very wet snow. Our guys were out plowing. Our crews were out plowing the main streets. But when you've got that wet, that type of nature of snow, cars can drive over very easily, and it packs down. <coughs> then it's very difficult to plow off when it's packed down. You may pack down eight inches down to about three inches. Um, then about midday on Sunday, the temperatures start dropping. And we start, we, we end up dropping down to about 20 in that, that before the, the Sunday evening was over. This, this was a storm again. It started late Saturday night, pretty much snowed all day Sunday. Um, we got dry snow on top of that. So when we were out plowing, you, the hard pack you created on the bottom was very difficult to come off. We had a lot of incidents where we had more than the normal amount of mailboxes being hit because this heavy wet snow below the dry snow was actually kind of pulling our vehicles off the road, pulling them over the curbs, and they were, they were bumping into mailbox more than normal. So, um, obviously, with such a wet snow, to, to add to that information, we never have trees down typically in the middle of winter from a snowstorm. We had trees down all over the city from this snow event. We had a, our, our crew was out plowing snow. We, could, we didn't have time to go out like in the summer if there's a severe thunderstorm, you know, hopefully, hopefully, yeah, not a tornado. We had a few tornadoes, but severe thunderstorms. We've had we've had winds, windstorms where our crews have to go out, and <coughs> cut down trees, get them off the road, clear the roadways. We have trucks to be able to do that. Our crews were not able to do that. We had trees down all over the city. We ended up hiring Homer Tree Service to come and pick up branches that were down. Again, very unusual for this time of the year. Um, I, I talked to folks from Rockford, Naperville, Aurora, Plainfield. Everybody had the same the same thing was out there where. You plowed snow, you got it all, you, you, get, you got through your whole, your whole city maybe in about a day and a half, and then you kept plowing every day thereafter because the sun would come out, it would warm it up, it would melt a little bit more of the snow, and it would, the, the, the hard, some of the hard pack at the top would fluff up, you'd plow it off, and people, people kept saying we didn't plow our street. Well, we, we had plowed our streets, and as part of this, this the report that our, our railways engineers turned, turned, uh, submitted, it shows that with the GPS show where trucks were out plowing. Um, that's, that's the nature of this storm, though. Very unusual. It was the same nature, you know, it was the same event that hit the whole, the whole northern Illinois. And again, we kept out there plowing. We, we were out for four days, five days after we plowed. We plowed every day, actually through Saturday of that week. By the time we got down, to, by the time we, uh, at the end of the day, Saturday, we were pretty much down to bare pavement everywhere, including residential streets. Very, very few rare cases that weren't. Um, on the report, it indicates in green with if, if the plow is down, in red if the plow is up. Um, there are instances where there are show on some of these, and, and, and first of all, it's not every one of our vehicles, some of the older vehicles do not have the GPS. We had 31 trucks out for the event. I believe there's 21 or 22 um, trucks that had their, the GPS system working. Some of the old ones, they weren't working properly, and we're getting ready to get new vehicles as it is, so uh, we, we didn't update those. Um, so that's why there's not every vehicle in our fleet had, had the GPS on it, but when, when you see where there's, there's, it shows in red where the, where the plow is up. There's a few instances what happens. Sometimes we're driving over state highways that, that we don't plow, Larkin Avenue, uh, Jefferson Street west of Larkin, for example, uh, Plainfield Road past six corners we don't plow. Um, those are, you may see red, uh, some red on there. The other thing is when we come to intersections, when we, after we plow an intersection straight through both directions, you tend to have a wind row at the, the corners. Our guys will go back then and push snow into the corner itself, and you got to lift that plow up so you're not knocking off the back of the curb. So that'll happen. The plow will come up, go back down if they get done doing that, uh, that activity. So, but generally, if you look at the sheets, you know the, the plows were were down. And um, again, I have you know I've been here 28 years. We've never been we've never told our folks, don't plow again unless, especially in a storm of this nature, we end up with 16 inches of snow. 
Um, you know, the other thing I've, I've told the city manager, and um, we talked about this four years prior to this storm, just the same day, we had that, they call it the groundhog blizzard, it was 2011. And that was even a little more substantial. We actually had to haul snow out of the downtown. We had, because we had a lot of snow on the ground at that time. We probably had a foot of snow, and then we got another 18 inches on top of it. So we actually had to haul with dump trucks and end loaders, scoop out the downtown or haul it out and haul it across to the bicentennial, it's actually south of the bicentennial park where we stockpiled the snow. But in that event, it was cold the whole time. I went back and looked at my weather records. I've, been, I've got weather records dating back to the early 80s in this area. And, <clears throat> excuse me, we were, when it was snowing at that event, it was very cold. Up before that event, it was in the low 20s, low to mid 20s at most, the warmest it got, and it got much colder thereafter. It was a lot easier to plow snow in that situation. So. But the bottom line is, our guys, were, they were out plowing, the plows were down, I, you know, I don't know, I'm not sure where that sort of silliness, I consider it, comes out that uh, our plows weren't down. Well, Jim, thank you for the uh, clarification and explanation, and I apologize to our, our city employees that have heard that and have confronted individuals making those comments, and I hope that clears the air, and thank you. Anyone else? Mayor uh, and council comments? Council comments? Jan? <clears throat> well, I'd just like to say recently there's been many phone calls, scam phone calls, targeting homeowners saying this is the IRS and we need to speak with you and they will put out their last four numbers of your social security number. IRS will not call you. They will send you a letter, something, in, you know, a form, uh, formal form. And um, I just want everybody to realize that if they get a call from the IRS, it's not the IRS. So just hang up, report the call if you want, but don't talk to them, do not give them any kind of information whatsoever. And happy St. Patrick's Day to everybody. Uh, thank you. I, I would also um, congratulate the Men of Valor um, and their initiative and all the pastors involved, not just the two that were on it tonight, there's a number of them. It's a great initiative and I think it's well needed in our community and certainly myself and I think others on the council will lend whatever support we can to that program. I also would like to thank the um, men and women of the St. John's Neighborhood Group and the Cunningham Neighborhood Group for the <coughs> debate that they put on last Thursday at the VFW Cantigny Post. Also thank Councilwoman Quillman, Councilman Morris and Councilman Hug for attending. Um, it was a great debate. It was um, nothing like what was advertised. It was a fair debate with, with two hours of questions from the audience. About 150 people were there. I think everybody who was there found it uh, thought-provoking and useful. And I think it's unfair the way that the organizers were targeted by uh, some in the media um, when all they wanted to do, they, these are people that care about their community, they volunteer in their community, and they want a, a good, honest debate, which is what it was. So thank you to that. I have nothing. Just happy St. Patrick's <coughs> Day. Nothing. Just quickly, um, Plainfield School District 202. Um, I serve on their Foundation for Excellence board. They're having their annual <coughs> dinner, fundraising dinner in April. My, um, what's the word, mea culpa on me, I don't have the date with me, but go to www.psd202.org or call any of the schools <laughs> and ask them. If you'd like to attend, the, it, it's, it's, they have it out at the Bowling Book Country Club, and it's a really nice affair, and it's their main fundraiser. The, the Foundation for Excellence supply, uh, sup, uh, pr provides money to teachers and students to further their education beyond the scope of what happens at the school, um, or supports them within the school on certain missions as well for education. So again, um, the Plainfield School District 202 Foundation for Excellence will be having their fundraiser in April. Go to psd uh, psd202.org to get the information or call any of the schools. It's a consolidated school district out by us. So the grade schools, the junior highs, and the high schools are all part of one district. Call any of those schools and they can direct you on the date. Or call me um, and, I, and I'll let you know as well. Other than that, happy St. Patrick's Day. John. Uh, just wishing everyone a happy St. Patrick's Day. Thank you. Betty. And happy St. Patrick's Day. I want to say happy birthday to the birthday. Jim and Marty and and certainly to uh, uh, Councilman Turk's father. Uh, so all of you all that have birthdays, happy birthday to you all. Thank you. Be safe. I want to uh, congratulate. I had the opportunity to sit and listen to young ladies from Joliet Central who are uh, trying to be 
Miss J. I didn't, I wasn't able to sit in for the Mr. J, but I would like to congratulate Anjay Holder, who is Miss J, and Daniel Valdovinos, who is Mr. J. I know there, the, the young ladies, uh, quite a group of, quite a group of young ladies, uh, it was hard to, uh, to rank them, but uh, just want to congratulate them. That's all. A motion to go in executive session? So moved. Thank you. It's been motioned and seconded to go into closed session to discuss personnel, collective bargaining, land acquisition, or conveyance, pending or threatened litigation, after which the meeting will be adjourned. Uh, Councilman Odekirk? Aye. Councilwoman Quillman? Aye. C Councilwoman Gavin? Aye. <coughs> Councilman Girl? Aye. Councilman Hubs? Aye. Councilman McFarland? Aye. Councilman Morris? Aye. Mayor Drani? Aye. Motion carried.